just a point on, on Liam Cattle. I don't think yesterday could have worked out any better for Waterford than Liam Cattle. They won a league final two weeks ago. Pro- probably enjoyed that success as they should. Um, as Nicky says, all the talk is bound to seep in. Uh, people probably losing the themselves after after winning the league title. They had loads of ad- adversity in the game. It reminded me um, quite a bit of uh, Tipperary and Limerick last year. I think the game... While the game, it looked like maybe the game turned in the early stage of the second half. I think the game turned probably around the 30th minute, maybe the first half. And you could just see, even though it maybe wasn't that reflected on the scoreboard, it looked like Waterford had turned the screw. They were winning a lot more 50-50 ball. Uh, There was an awful lot more energy. Then the lads came in and it was quickly turned around. Fair enough, they didn't kind of blaze away. But they won a game maybe that they wouldn't have won a couple of years ago. They had to, they, they were hit with an awful lot in the first half an hour where sometimes when you're hit with something maybe that you're not expecting or you're in some way complacent, you don't get over that game and you just end up, you know, learning lessons after. They were able to learn lessons mid-game. Plus, got Ozzy back in the fray, got Jamie Barron back in the fray, uh, Neil Montgomery, who was brilliant in the league final, and Carrick Daly, who was brilliant in the league final, both taken off at half time. They're both going to have a point to prove now. It's it's gas. I was only thinking after the league final, uh, Irla Daly must have been in a weird weird kind of position where he was the, the one on the Waterford panel flying. Then his brother comes in, gets man of the match, and then all of a sudden, Irla Daly is the one that finishes the game absolutely superb yesterday. And I just that's probably a great sign of, of the Waterford squad as well that they have game-changing players to come in and change the game like they did yesterday. But I don't think Liam Cattle could have dreamt a, a better scenario than the way it worked out for them yesterday. Do you know, I mean, I, I think a lot of... You know I've talked an awful lot about some of the Tipperary players that I should have felt needed more game time by this stage of their careers and deserved more game time by this stage of their career. I think a lot of that was underlined in the, in this game against Waterford. Like, Craig Morgan, what a job he did in keeping Stephen Bennett scoreless from play throughout the entirety of the game. Dylan Quirk thought he was pretty good. Obviously, he had that heavy tackle at one stage that, that he got booked for. Mark Kyo, two goals from play. But it wasn't just that. It was all the other ball that he won. And he was just an outlet for Tipperary when, you know, he, he probably wanted to spend a year or two beside Seamus Callanan, you know, when he's learning his trade. And Callanan is the one taking the brunt of the attention. But, you know, it was Kyo taking the brunt of the attention. And it was probably some of the key men for Tipperary that we've seen, you know, for year on year. You know that have all the experience that probably didn't really step up in the game yesterday but the other thing I, I, I questioned beforehand when I saw the team being selected was Dan McCormick not being started this happened in the Munster semi-final in 2020 against Limerick or was it a quarter final and they have to bring him on to win ball he comes in here scores two points wins ball Nicky did, did you find that a strange one in a game where you know it's going to be a war and you're going to have to win 50-50 ball am I being biased as a Burris Lee person by saying why is he not starting no, I can understand you saying that. But I think in fairness to Colin Bonner, when he came in at the start of this year, he knew he had to make changes. I mean, in in truth, probably Liam should have made some changes last year, but he went with what he went with, and we know the outcome of that. But I would say in fairness that um, there's players like Dan McCormick, because he has a fair bit of experience. He's also a big, physical, strong player that's probably needed and would certainly be needed as the championship progresses. So I'd say Colin will probably reflect on that, but I still think he will be, he has shown good faith and for good reason in his younger players. And I still think he will stay with those because uh, they're, they're going to be the future of Tipperary Hurlan. And I, and I think in fairness to Colin Bonner, he has to probably, he probably realizes, look, I can't get this sorted in one year. I need a year or two or three. And with that in mind, he has to give, um, he has to show faith in his younger players. And that might mean players like Dan McCormick might occasionally uh, not start matches. And uh, you, you can understandably ask, why is, that, uh, why is that the case? But I think that's the way Colin Bonner is probably going to. He's going to show faith in his younger players as much as possible. And players who were maybe, I'll call them fringe players, although Dan McCormick was a little bit more than a fringe player to be fair to him. Uh, I think they may lose out occasionally. But um, I think Dan McCormick has probably... Uh, sent a message to Colin yesterday that, look, I'm here, I need to be involved with this team here. I'm bringing a lot of the characteristics needed to compete at the highest level. Uh, and I'd say he probably has done enough to, uh, to merit inclusion next weekend. But I do think Colin is very much going down the pathway of finding new players, finding younger players, showing faith in younger players. Uh, and I think he, you know, he got fairly well rewarded yesterday, even if at the end of the day, the final result was, uh, was not to his liking. Yeah, well, one of the big things is, there was a real concern of a repeat of the Munster final last year when, you know, like like Michael was saying there, just before half time, it kind of turned a little bit. 
start of the second half, Tipperary getting steamrolled, and the fact that they steadied down, because this was a, a real game of momentum. Tipperary had some wides at the start of the game. I wonder, was there a little bit of nerves there, you know, with so many fresh players coming in for their, I suppose, lads who haven't played that much. James Quigley, he came in and did really, really well. You know, I've already mentioned the likes of Mark Kyo. Watford started off, went four points to nil up. Then Tipperary went on a run of 1-8 to two points. And by half time, obviously, Limerick or Watford had pulled a couple back. But in the first half, Tip had scored 1-9 from play, whereas Watford had scored just five points. And again, I mean, I'm more going to throw this towards uh, the two of you and see your opinions because, you know, it's always coloured by the fact that I'm from Tipperary. But I couldn't understand Michael Kiley not get sent, getting sent off. High ball went in. I don't think he went to strike Seamus Kendi like that. But he wasn't in full control of where the hurley was going. He caught Seamus Kendi across the head. And, I, you know, that was possibly the change in the game, Michael. Yeah, um, I've looked at looked at it a couple of times. It's amazing how hurling has changed. Like, you know, just lo looking back, we'll say uh, Liam Dunn was about two feet under the ball and Gary Kirby in 96. And, you know, the, the, the play just moved on. I don't even know if it was a free at the time. Whereas, you know, 25 years later, uh, the overhead pull is, is that alien in hurling now that, you know, something like that could be, could be deemed a red card now it was dangerous um but i i'd, I'd agree i'd agree with uh with andrew there in the comments i i think it was yellow I, I i think a lot of it is to do with with intent for me i i don't think it was you know unbelievably wild 